What's going on, folks? It's Larry with Pack Matches Dog Training here. Happy New Year to everyone out there. Um, let's get right to the point. Um, this week, I've turned down several trainers, several professional trainers who wanted to come shadow me for a week. Um, I've turned them down because I don't do that. I'm not in a position to do that. I'm, I'm flattered and I'm very honored that you think enough of me to want to come spend a bunch of money and spend a week with me learning. But I just don't do that. And here's why. Um, I train dogs a few hours a week. Um, I'm fortunate enough that I've put in enough time and I've learned what works for me, what works for the client, what works for the dogs, to where I don't have to commit eight to 10 hours a day of doing this. So I'm very, very fortunate in, in that aspect. And um, I think maybe a lot of more, a lot more people want to get, get to that point. They're out there killing themselves 15, 16 hours a day. But that's what you do when, when you do this full time and it's your only source of income. I'm in a fortunate position to where I don't have to do that. But over the years, I've developed what works for me what is most convenient for me, but still produces very high results. And it didn't happen overnight. It, it just didn't. Um, contrary to popular belief, I'm being told this week, I've had several people asking me, um, you know, about, about coaches, you know, hiring a, a, a coach and, you know, they're under the impression that I've had some coaches in the business helping me with the business. No, I've never had help from anyone. I've never hired a coach, a business coach or anything. So let me get that straight now. No, I have, I have not. Uh, everything I've done throughout the years has been learning from others, learning from people that were already doing it much better than me. Okay. Um, I've been very fortunate to learn from people that were very successful in, in the business already. I've learned from so many on the dog side of it, but I've also learned a few on the business side of it. Um, I, I've learned more about the business from Fred Hassan and Dave Skoletsky from Sit Mean Sit than anyone else. Yeah, people are going to be surprised to hear me say that, but don't be. You know, I'm always going to give credit where credit's due. It's just, it's very important. I learned so much about the business from those guys and how they were doing things. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was struggling for a while when I first started with the franchise several years ago, and I thought because I had a, a name behind me that business would just be flying in. Well, that wasn't the case, not even close. And uh, Dave gave me a call, asked me how things were going, and I said, not going so good. And he said, do, do me a favor, promise me you'll book a show, a trade show, something this week. I said, okay. He said, no, I'm serious, promise me. I said, okay, I will. So. I found a gun show in Smyrna, Tennessee. I booked that gun show. I spent $60 to rent a table for the weekend at this gun show. Um, Sophia was a baby at the time. Bruno was very young. He was a young dog. And uh, I decided I'm going to go rent a table at this gun show. I didn't know what to expect. When we got there, my wife, my baby... Bruno and myself. I got there. We pulled up. It was in a really, really undesirable section in a very rundown old flea market. Long line of people outside. When I walked in, I was so bummed. I was devastated. I almost cried. I couldn't believe, I, I couldn't take my family and spend the day at this place. But my wife, being being the, the trooper that she is and, and uh, loving me as much as she does, she said, no, we're going to stay. Give it a shot. So I did. And all I did was hang out. I had my business information. I had Bruno hanging out, meeting and greeting people. And guess what? There were thousands of people there. Tons of tables selling guns and buying guns. There was only one dog trainer there, and that was me. There was only one Rottweiler greeting people and meeting people the whole time we were there. We had a crowd of people around our table the whole time. I think the gun show opened at 8 o'clock. We stayed there about till two o'clock. I ended it a little early because my dog getting a little started getting a little stressed out and overwhelmed. And we wrapped it up. So I spent sixty dollars for that weekend for a table for two days. I only went there Saturday from about eight in the morning till two in the afternoon. And I made seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand dollars off a sixty dollar investment. Okay. All because Dave said you gotta do this. Well, he was, he was right. 
after that, I never looked back. Business started booming. Um, the most important thing you can do as a dog trainer is have something to show. Your dog, your client's dogs, are your best advertisement. There are no tricks to the business, all right? Um, for years, I spent a lot of time and a lot of money, money traveling all over to work with people that I thought were the best in the business. And so I didn't care what it cost me. I didn't care that I had to drive 14 hours. I was going to do it because I was going to learn from people that were better than me. That, that That's it. Okay. So I used to do the free in-home demo thing. I had my demo dog. I used to do house cold. I used to train in people's homes. I was always driving. You know, it, it got to the point where I didn't enjoy it anymore. I just didn't enjoy it. It was kind of lonely being out there in your car all the time. I was making good money. You know, people pay a lot of money for good dog training. But the issue was I made a name for myself by the dogs I was creating. I had something to show. All right. And this was before videos were, were, were big or videos were even really out really, you know? So it got to a point where I was tired of being away from my wife and kids on the weekends. And, and I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. I got burnt out and I took a whole year off. So between dealing with really aggressive dogs that just fried me and, and constantly being gone training dogs, I just said, I don't want to do this anymore. And I, I stopped for a whole year. And then my wife said to me, she said, why don't you uh, have people come to you? I said, well, nobody's going to to come to me, you know, drive over an hour for me to train their dog. Well, I took her advice. And again, she was right. People come to me. So now I never have to leave my house. OK, they come to me and sometimes from far away, sometimes spend the weekend in a hotel and we do private sessions. So I've gotten to a point now where over the years I've made it more convenient and more convenient for me and my family. I have more clients than I can get to and I wind up putting people off and waiting a long time because I take my time and I do it right. You know, I'm not doing this cookie cutter stuff where I'm just spitting out dogs constantly. I'm taking the right people. I'm training the right dogs. Um, back to the in-home demo thing. I hated doing that. I hated the street marketing. I hated doing the shows. But it's something you have to do when you're starting out. You have to put yourself out there and be visible. You just have to be. In today's world, with social media and YouTube, you know, didn't have that when we started. I mean, you have all the opportunity in the world to blow up. But the most important thing is, for one, you got to be personable. You got to be likable. And you got to be able to put out a good product. And that means a highly trained dog. And so when I stopped doing in-home demonstrations, it was the best thing in the world for me. Because when I used to do that, I felt like a salesman, not a dog trainer. And I'm not a salesman, all right? So I would go, like a lot of you do, I would demonstrate my dog. Then I would talk to the people and try to get them to sign up. I hated it. I hated doing that with a passion. I really did. And then one day... This woman calls on the phone wanting a free home, a free in-home demonstration. And I told her, I said, you know what? I said, uh, I'm booked for about three or four months with in-home demonstration. It's going to take a while for me to get to you. She said, okay. She said, um, if I sign up right now over the phone, can you start me this weekend? I said, absolutely. And she did. She signed up over the phone and I started her that weekend. No in-home demonstration, no nothing. That was the day where dog training really became enjoyable to me because I never did an in-home demonstration again. I never went out to a corner and worked my dog. I never did any guerrilla marketing. You know, I didn't do any more shows. That was the day I changed it. But I put in enough time and had trained enough dogs where people were seeing my clients' dogs. They were seeing my dogs and, and that was enough. And so that is your best advertisement. What kind of dogs are you putting out there? So I tell people all the time, you know, are you dealing with a dog trainer or a used car salesman? Because there's plenty of both out there. You have to just decide which one is, uh, you know, which, which is which. And there's a lot of scams out there. There's a, a lot of really crummy dog trainers out there. The industry isn't regulated. So anyone can say they're a professional dog trainer. And I think there's definitely more bad ones than good ones. But no matter what part of the country you're in, there are very good dog trainers. I had someone a couple of months ago that's been having problems with their dog for a long time, for over a year now. 
ask me a lot of questions. I answer them, you know, down in the Nashville area. And then finally it got so bad. They said, we have to do something, but you know, we can't drive an hour to see me. Um, is there anybody within 15 minutes of us? Well, guess what? If that person called me today and said, we need to come up, I'd say, no, I don't want to work with someone like that. That's someone who just has no commitment to fixing their dog. And that's not the kind of people I want to deal with. But I'm in a position now to where I can do that. To where before, oh man, I would take anyone. Let me tell you about my first in-home demonstration, okay? This is how awesome my wife is. She's the best. Love you, babe. My first in-home demonstration was for a Doberman that his name was Chopper. And he was aggressive. People aggressive, dog aggressive. I agreed to go do an in-home demonstration. My daughter wasn't born yet. So my wife says, come on, I'm going to go with you. And we got in the car and we drove. We drove two and a half hours to the middle of bumfuck Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, in the hills and hollers, to this trailer that was surrounded by Sanford and Son junk to meet this Doberman. Two and a half hours. That's what I did. And again... I was real depressed when I pulled up and my wife talked me off the ledge. She said, we're here, go do it. Like you were working for a celebrity. She said something to that effect. And she was right. We went, they were real nice people. We talked about it and uh, we went outside and the dog was behind a gate. And uh, I said to him, I said, okay, well, I'm going to go in there and put a leash on the dog. And the owners looked at me and said, you can't go in there and put a leash on that dog. I said, yeah, I, I can. And they go, oh, they said, no, please don't. You can't go in there and put a leash on that dog. I said, well, I'm here. So that's what I'm, don't worry, I can. I knew the dog was was more, more bark than bite. So I went in there, I put a leash on the dog and I started working the dog. And um, I worked him for probably 10 minutes and the dog turned around, you know? And then the issue was, well, he's real aggressive with the neighbor's dogs. So I went to the next trailer by the neighbor's dogs and I worked them around the neighbor's dog. And, you know, he was great. He was a really sharp dog. And the people were blown away. Even my wife, who had never really seen me do that before, was really impressed. She, she was, I saw the look on her face and then she told me when we got in the car, like, I can't believe what I just witnessed. Guess what? Did those people sign up? Hell no. They didn't have any money for dog training. They, they didn't have any money for dog training. But... I had to pay my dues, you know, that's, that's how you, you get good at what you're doing. You know, you make all the mistakes, you waste a lot of time, you know, anyone who's come in this business when I did, and especially the people before me had to learn through trial and error. So today everybody wants a quick fix. All right. Um, you guys are wanting to start your business and start making six figures, you know, in, in, in the first six months. And, and that's possible. It really is. But here's the one thing that no one's telling you guys. You have to be able to produce a product that everybody wants. And that means you have to make a dog look like a superstar that wasn't before. If you can do that, if you can get a list of clients with dogs that other people didn't want to deal with, and you show you show real progress. None of this before and after stuff, you know, that's done in two days. If you show true progress, you put out a good product and you get it out there, you know, in today's world, it's easy to get it out there. You're not going to have to chase business. The business is going to be chasing you. Believe me. Believe me when I tell you. There's a lot of folks out there that'll see this now. They could, they can, uh, they could attest to this. I talk to people from all over the world every day, every single day. A lot of trainers think I'm wasting my time because I'm not getting paid for it. Well, I do it because I enjoy it. And if I can help someone, I can. And you know what, guys? Today's my birthday, January 6th. The birthday wishes started coming in yesterday, January 5th. And I couldn't understand why. But guess what? In Australia and in that part of the world, it was January 6th. And I was getting bombarded with happy birthday wishes from the other side of the world. And I mean, I was touched by that. That was truly awesome. I mean, I appreciate that more than you can understand. It's pretty cool. So there were people out there that helped me, you know, and now my job is to help people. I've never had a coach. I haven't paid anyone to coach me. Um, the reason I'm saying that is I had several calls this week that asked me, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. And I was told, you know, you hired coaches and these coaches. No, I've never hired anyone. No one's helped me do anything on purpose. The people that have helped me had, had been non-intentional. 
All right. Um, so you got to learn about the business as much as you can, of course. But guys, you got to treat people decent. If you're if you're a decent person, you treat people right. You don't try to be a, a salesman. And if you have the ability to do what they need done, you're going to succeed. And of course, you got to hustle. You know, you, you got to hustle. But um, spend the money and travel and work with the people that are doing what you want to do. Work with the people that are where you want to be. That's where you got to put your money. All right. So I, I listen, I could easily tell these people that asked to come see me for a week. I could easily say, yeah, sure. And charge a bunch of money. Some of the prices that people have told me they're paying. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Maybe I am missing the boat. It's absolutely <laughs> insane. I couldn't do that comfortably, you know, and um, I'm not the person that would be the, the best suited for someone who who does this full time for a living because they're not going to get their best bang for their buck with me. You know, I do this a few hours a week and I know I, I guess everyone would like to do that. Well, I had to put in my time and, and I made it over the years where it's more and more convenient for me. But at the same time, I'm still a student of the dog. And and that's where I put my time. I, I am a constant student and I'll never stop learning. All right. So you got to learn about the business, of course. But most importantly, the one fundamental thing that I see all these people I talk to, what they're not understanding and what they're not pushing for, you got to become a pretty damn good dog trainer before the business comes rolling in without a lot of effort. Okay. I hope this helps someone out there. As usual, I'm there if I can help you. If I can answer questions, hit me up. I talk to you folks every day. I've met a lot of cool people. And uh, thanks for, for the support. But again, get out there and learn as much as you can. Peace.